You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, Lucha Central Weekly. Hello and welcome to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. We are here with an exclusive interview. This is Miranda Morales and Dusty Murphy, our guest at this time. He is one of the top talents in all of pro wrestling with a year so good. He was featured on Pro Wrestling Illustrated's 2021 One to Watch list and was recently awarded the 2020 SoCal Uncensored Wrestler of the Year Award. You've seen him all over at the United Wrestling Network, AEW, New Japan Strong, and has recently signed with Major League Wrestling. But not only that, this man is a Marine Corps veteran and has also stepped into the world of acting as the star of the award-winning short film joe riv this man is so lit he is radioactive please welcome to the show danny limelight Mi gente, thank you so uh-huh. much honestly like that was like the best introduction i've ever received <laughs> on any podcast ever thank you guys so much miranda and dusty thank you for having oh, me on the show you. i'm excited to be here and I'm just, you know, I was sitting here listening to you guys, you know, say all the, all those things, all those accolades or, or, or titles or whatever. Man. And it was been a crazy year, huh? <laughs> and that's all you. Yes. That's yeah. all you, brother. Yeah. Like, that's it. Say that. We are so happy to have you. And that is absolutely all you. So, I mean, a huge congratulations to the year that you've had and much more to come, which we'll get into in a little bit. Because, man, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. You're October. Uh, is intense. You got some big matches coming up that I I'm very, very excited to ask you about. But we're gonna go back a little bit. We're gonna ask you to, to travel back to the beginning. Oh, going yeah, down. yeah. So like, I just had to ask. You know, how does a kid from New York City go from traveling the world with the Marines and being a drill instructor to traveling the world as a professional wrestler? Like, what was your journey in, in between? Like, how did you get there? Man, I don't even <laughs> it, it's crazy when I think about it sometimes because you know, growing up in the streets of Brooklyn as a kid, you know, trouble, knucklehead, whatever you wanna label me as growing up, you know, I even though I was like a little problem child, I always knew that there was so much more from life that I wanted. Like I always knew that I wanted to be bigger. You know, I wanted to be in the limelight, you know, I I, I wanted to leave the scoop. I wanted to get out of that four block radius. You know, a lot of people from New York City, they had the New York state of mind and they never leave New York. But I knew that I wanted more. And so joining the Marine Corps at 17 years old, traveling the world, the first place the Marine Corps sent me was Japan. I was there for two years from, the, you know, from 18 to 20 years old in another country, no family around, just just my brothers and sisters from the Marine Corps, you know. And I think that kind of gave me the bug of wanting to just be somewhere else other than New York City. I think it kind of gave me that bug of like wanting to see the world because there's so much out there. You know, a lot of people don't get that 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 luxury of being able to travel or go see places or going on vacations and stuff like that. And I didn't have that as a kid. I I never got to travel. You know, I think one time my parents took, yeah, one time my parents took me to to Florida with my siblings, you know, to go to like Disney World. But but I was young. I don't really remember it. And a, a lot of people from New York, when they go on vacation or they leave New York, they go to Florida. That's like what everybody does in New York City. <laughs> so for me. You know, to have that that privilege of being able to travel on the government's dime with the Marine Corps going to Japan and Thailand, Cambodia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Australia, you know, all those deployments that I did with 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit. And then landing in California, San Diego, going to be a drone instructor and then, and then stumbling into professional wrestling, which was something that I loved to watch as a kid. You know, as a kid, I wanted to be a wrestler. I got photos of me as a child with, you know, WWF belts and stuff like that. And I used to jump and wrestle with my dad and you know, have all these cool names that I would have named myself, which I didn't use any of them because they're not as cool as I thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to have fun. And honestly, like, life is so short. And I, I just wanted to do everything that I wanted to do, which is why I didn't hesitate, which is why I took the chance on wrestling, which is why I said I wanted to go be an actor. And I went and did that. Because if you sit at home or, or, or you you tell yourself, I'm, I'm okay here, I'm fine here, then that's what, where you'll always be. And, and me, I, I'm never satisfied. I, I, I always want more from life. I always feel like there's more that I should be doing. And in order for me to get there, there's certain steps that I have to take. And so traveling from the Marine Corps, now traveling for wrestling, it's been awesome. I've had so much fun. I, I, I was looking at it like I used to be afraid of planes. And I used to like, you know, ever since 9-11 happened, I, I had like a little fear of planes and stuff like that. And this last year alone, my American Airlines account, like 40,000 plus traveled miles. <laughs> <laughs> awesome like i'm doing things that I, i've always wanted to do you know so cool yeah can you explain so you mentioned landing in san diego um and, and seemingly ending your career at the marines there and that seems to also be that jump off point where you started in wrestling uh you know right. what kind of what was that drive when you made that transition to say i'm going to do this a lot of people have that goal and dream as a kid but you actually did it. So what was that process like for you in deciding you know, to, to go into wrestling, but also in finding, you know, the right place to land and training and, and finding the people to, to work with to actually, right. you know, learn wrestling? Well, I don't I don't consider myself professionally trained. You know, I, I did like a couple months at a wrestling school. Um, I won't say their name because they kicked me out and told me I'll never wrestle. They said I never make it. They said I was too arrogant, I was too cocky, whatever other excuses they used, they said I'll never make it. And now I'm I'm pretty sure that I proved them wrong, and I proved a lot of people wrong. Yeah. So I, I started training, and it sucked because it, it, it was something that I wanted to do, and then I had a, a bad taste in my mouth because the, the people that was running the school, they, you know, it just, it just, they didn't want me there, and they made sure that I wasn't there. And for a while, I thought I wasn't going to be able to wrestle because I didn't have a place to train, you know? And so... When when I would get off work from the Marine Corps, I, I'd be there at 5 a.m. training Marine, and then I'd get off and drive, you know, 35 plus minutes to the school to try to train, and I'd come home, you know, I'd go like three months old, four months old at the time, and try to spend time well, then I go to sleep, wake up, do it all over again, you know. So I think what really helped me. You know, to, to, to progress into the, the world of wrestling was David Marquez. And he's he's yeah. the man I call Theo Marquez. You know, he's yeah. been around the wrestling world for 30 plus years. And, and he kind of took me under his wing. When the school kicked me out, they said I'd never wrestle again. They kind of contacted and tried, made these posts on social media to try to make me look like a bad guy. So nobody wanted to book me. So for a while, I wasn't getting any bookings. And then, you know, David Marquez called me and he asked me for, you know, my side of the story. You know, he was the first person that said, I want to hear why they kick you out. And I told him, I took a booking in L.A. They got mad that I took a booking from another company and won a match up there. And, and they were all salty about it. And he's like, that's fucking dumb. And I'm bringing you in to work on my television show. That's how I made my, my television debut. I was nine months in the business, green as hell. And I'm wrestling for championship wrestling from Hollywood as Los Primos Rivera with Gino mm -hmm. Rivera. Yes, I gotta say, like, that was my first introduction to Danny Limelight, was you teaming with Gino and being part of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and at that time, too, like, I... The the way that you guys worked just was so easy, but also, it, you guys were electric. Like, yeah. I just remember listening to your promos and the way that you guys were so vocal and outspoken, and I got hyped in my bathroom, like just, you know, being so <laughs> proud of, of these West Coast Ricans out here, uh, just just on fire. So, you know, and I know that was it, it probably feels like a long time ago, but also yesterday, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I was I was just thinking about that. And it's like it's been six years now. Wow. Wow. That, yeah, I'm I'm sure, especially over the past year and all the travel that you've done, it's uh, it probably seems like a lifetime ago, but also yeah, just yesterday. So, so yeah, uh, and, and, what, what know, a journey. Let's give a sh give a shout out to Gino, you know, because he he was the more experienced wrestler at the time, and one thing that he said was, 
no matter what happens, every time they put a microphone in front of us and let us talk, we need to make sure that we we rip that shit. And that's exactly what we did. We made sure that every time we cut a promo, we try to make it as fire as possible. And that's the one thing that I took with me forever was promos is what's going to get me to where I want to go. Because it, there's two things I know how to do is talk shit and dance. And <laughs> that's all I do. You know? like, uh, give me a microphone, let me talk my shit, and then let me do my little, you know, my little cha-cha bachata dance, and, and I'm good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now that we've kind of visited the past, we're going to actually jump a little bit in the future and the current stuff, but the future. Actually, this coming weekend, you actually have a big October ahead of you, but I want to start with a trios match you have coming up with Major League Wrestling, your yeah. new home. You, uh, as part of 5150, are going up against Los Parks. And I just recently saw Los Parks at Pro Wrestling Revolution this past weekend. And they are really one of the most brutal trios in all of pro wrestling. And so I'm just curious about how you feel going into that match, knowing what lies ahead with Los Parks. Well, let's be real, man. Los Parks, La Parca. You know, the legacy of those parks that people know that name, people know what they're about, people know how they get down. But you know what? They, what the, the bottom line is this. Me and Slice Boogie, Conan, the OG, Julia Smokes, we all come from different parts of this world. But I know where me and Slice grew up at. I know the shit that Slice went through. I know what I went through growing up. So I don't care who it is that you put in front of the ring with us. What I do see is three guys and two of them are holding championship belts that I want. Mm-hmm. Me and Slice, we walked into MLW to, to rob the house. You understand? We want championship gold. So I don't care if we got to beat the shit out of those parks. I don't care if we got to beat the shit out of Injustice. I don't care if they want to line up the Bon Erics and every other team in the back. Now these, we're not stopping until we get those belts. And this weekend, we have a trios match with those parks. It's going to be hard hitting. It's going to be brutal. But at the end of the day, we're going to walk out on top because we want the gold. And there's only one way to get that, and it's to beat the champs. Yeah. So cool. H- how did it come around that you, Slice, and Julius became the new LAX? And, and like, how did you feel when you found out you would be the next LAX? You get to work with Conan. So I, uh, I've, I've had a good working relationship with Conan. Shout out to Conan, the OG, for many years. He was actually one of the first guys that brought me. To, he was the first guy that brought me to Mexico. He brought me to, to the crash when I was, like, one year in the big. Um, and he gave me my first chance and I wrestled in front of the 5,000 people. There it was a huge moment in my career. You know, I loved it. And then he brought me back off a triple A. So we always had that kind of relationship. And then, so when my time with AEW was up, it was literally like the next day or two days after that Conan called me. He's like, yo, I got an idea. I want to run by you. I was like, what's up? And he told me, he's like, bringing you in, you slice boogie, the new LAX. What you think? And I was like, oh, shit, let's do it. Like, <laughs> you know? Shit. You ain't got to ask me. You know, I think of the Latin American exchange. I think of Homicide and Hernandez. I think of Santana and Ortiz. You know, people that I respect, people that, that, that I consider homies. You know, especially Santana and Ortiz. I never met Hernandez. And I, I only spoke to Homicide briefly. But Santana and Ortiz were, were two of the guys that kind of looked out for me when I first got to AEW. They made sure that I was good. They kind of, like, took me under their wing a little bit, you know. So they showed me love. But what I do respect about them even more than that was that they have two dudes from New York, you know what I'm saying, just like me and Slice, yeah. and they represent it for the Puerto Rican culture. And to me, that's important. You know, I have a Puerto Rican daughter, and so I want to make sure that she sees that flag flying proudly, that she has people to look up to. And that's for every Puerto Rican kid, every Latin kid, that they see Latin Americans and Latinos on TV, on a, at a bigger stage, showing them that if we can make it out the hood, we can make it out of whatever struggles and tri- tribulations we've been through and, and be a face for that. You know what I'm saying? So when people see us, they're like, you know, if these kids could do it, you know, these guys could do it, we can do it. You know, that, that that's the goal, to get there, you know? And and, and that, I, was, I was inspired by that. I was inspired by seeing these guys, you know, Homicide and Hernandez back in the day, Santana Ortiz, performing at a big level, but still representing where they're from. And now I get to do that. God, you're I'm trying to stay strong, trying to stay strong because then those words are sinking in, you know, because that's, that's, as I mentioned, just watching you starting from championship wrestling from Hollywood into this level and you keep building it up. You keep on growing. And exactly that all of the Latinos, but especially 
Puerto Ricans, especially this, these West Coast Puerto Ricans out here, we're just a small minority, but to see that on our televisions, online, on social media, you know, that's, is, it's already a very proud culture, but when you take it to that level where you go worldwide, man, there's nothing uh, I absolutely know 100% you're, you're, you're making the culture proud. You're bringing up a new generation of kids. Right. And, and, and honestly, I just was afforded opportunities. You know, it started, it started at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. But the, what took me to that next level was when I made my New Japan Strong debut. Um, and I became a big, you know, major player on New Japan Strong, you know, f- you know feuding with Rocky Romero, you know, going to the finals of the Lions Break Crown Tournament, joining Team Filthy. I got to really, you know, that's when my, the Puerto Rican stuff started. Really, I started really playing back into that because for a while, I, took, I stood away from it for a while. When I was in the Indies, I kind of did like the whole Spidey Limelight thing. Um, but then I went to New Japan. I kind of, you know, dabbled back into the the Puerto Rican side, you know, because I, I felt like that's what I wanted to do. That's what I needed to do for my culture, for my people. And it kind of, that's what, you know, what I really started to, build my brand at a bigger level you know and that's cerulean blue and, and then that's when aw had hit me up and then i went over there and then i started coming out with the the, the puerto rican bandana at, at aw and then you know when i made my my dynamite debut you know wrestling kenny omega i i debuted my new puerto rican gear it was like the puerto rican flag trunks with the the, the, the knee pads yeah, so cool. and on it so, it, you know, and, and now getting to do that for Major League Wrestling and still doing it over at New Japan and still doing it at the you know United Wrestling Network, it's, it's, it's been great. What was it like to do all that in a year where there weren't really any crowds? Like normally you would have – to do all this in a year, there would be so many crowds, you know, but, but yeah. it was kind of intimate comparatively. So what was that like for you? Ah, uh, man. I don't, you know, Ray Rosas, everybody – you guys know Ray Rosas. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he he made a joke one time. I don't even think he's gonna remember. He, if he hears this, I don't know if he'll remember. He said this. It was right when I when 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 they announced that I won the SoCal Wrestle of the Year when the polls first were done, and he was like, somehow you know, Danny Limelight took the worst year in history and made it his year. And, and honestly, I I, I just didn't want to have any excuses. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to say, oh, I didn't make it because of the pandemic. You know, I took every opportunity that I got and I ran with it. I, 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 I told myself it was literally the pandemic kicked off six months after I got out of the Marine Corps and I decided to go full time. Wow. Wow. So I, I went full time with wrestling and then the pandemic happened and I was like, either I'm going to go broke and my daughter's not going to eat or I need to do something. Uh, and I ended up separating my shoulder and being told I was going to be out for four months. And I was like, there's no way like, I can't do that. I wrestled one month after I separated my shoulder forced the recovery back got into the gym started grinding and and, you know i had luckily fortunately i had did my new japan strong um excuse me not my new japan strong but my new japan tryout like a month before i separated my shoulder and so when when they hit me up and when they wanted to bring me in i was ready and and you know it sucked that there was no fans but i wasn't gonna let that be a factor you know i looked at it as okay I need to perform for the cameras. This is this is what people are going to see. Whatever these cameras are on, I need to have my face on that camera. Whenever I go to the back and I get a microphone or a chance to talk my shit, I need to talk my shit. And, and you know, I'm forever thankful for New Japan because if I don't think I would have ever made it to AEW if, if I didn't first get my foot in at New Japan. And further, I don't think I would have got the opportunities I got at AEW if I didn't have that kind of, like, New Japan backing, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, you know, yeah. I wrestled there, you know, you kind of you kinda, people, are, OK, he wrestled at this company. This is one of the best companies in the world, you know, so. So then and then with the AEW stuff, you know, I wish that there was crowds when when I, when, I, when I was there, I wish there was a crowd for a lot of the stuff, a lot of the matches that I had, you know, wrestling Ray Phoenix, one of my favorite matches ever, you know, wrestling Seidel, the, the even my Dynamite debut and things like that, like that you know, but but what, what I would say is that like. It. It allowed me to work on the little things, you know, like certain things that, that that I would not have been able to focus on if there was a crowd, if that makes sense, you know. Right. And when the crowds came back, you know, I got to do that for a little bit over there. And, and now, you know, when I made my debut with MLW, you know, when the music hit, the crowd, I got goofy. <laughs> <laughs> went nuts. I can't wait to be back at Philly. Damn. Yeah. 
So tell us uh, what really drew you to signing with MLW. I mean, they went through a surge and a revamp, and you are part of that. And they really, you know, put that out there in the press as far as you signing as as Rivera and being a part of the future of MLW. What made you put pen to paper with them? Um, I think it was the revamp that they were doing. I like a lot of the people that they were bringing in. A lot of great guys. You know, you think of, you know, you got Hammerstone's one of the main players there. Fatu's one of the main players there. But then you have guys like TJP, you know, Davey Richards, Casey Navarro, you know, Gino Medina. There's a, there's so many talented people at that company. You know, the Judge. You know, uh, um, just just went straight there from NXT. You know, there's just guys like Myron Reed and so many talented people that I hadn't had a chance to wrestle yet. You know, and so it was that, and then of course it was the fact that they wanted to do the LAX thing. You know, the 5150. That that was yeah. the that was the guarantee right there. When I heard that part, I was like, okay, I'm coming in as LAX. I'm, I'm going to be rolling with my boy Slice Boogie, who's already part of the bodega with me. So we already have the chemistry. And you putting Conan by my side? Yeah, I can't lose. Yeah, I can't lose. You really can't. And speaking of Slice, you guys are also teaming up on October 22nd. PCW Ultra, all systems go. In another tag match with another pretty brutal tag team of, of War Beast. And that's what I'm going to say. I'm, I, I have confidence in you, but man, is October a, a, a brutal month no of, of, of competitors for you. Uh, you know, talk about you know, coming back to PCW Ultra in their first show since the pandemic and being able to tag with Slice in that California environment. It's going to be insane, man. You, you know, October is stacked for me. You talked about Los Parks. You know, but before I see before I see War Beast on the 22nd, on the 16th and the 17th, I'm in Philly again with New Japan. You know, it was a huge 10 man match, Team Filthy versus Carl Fredericks, Fred Ross, and Rocky Romero, and, and two other. I can't remember off the top of my head right now the two other guys that's in the match. That's gonna be another hard hitting match. You know, I have my my beef with Rocky Romero. I have my beef with Fred Ross. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of beef with Carl Fredericks. We went through a whole five months of fighting on New Japan Strong. You know. And then after that week, rolling right into PCW, taking on the longest reigning tag champs of all time, and you know, mm -hmm. Fatu and Joseph Samuel, the Sheik. It, it's it's everybody knows it's gonna be a hard hitting match. Everybody knows it's gonna be fights. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. But you know what? They have things on their waist that me and Slice want. Me and Slice, we want to make 2021 the year of us. You know, what I'm saying we want to represent for the bodega with my boy Papo Esco. We want we want to represent for the you know, the Latin culture, and we want to make the LAX 5150 gang proud. You know, we have a chance. You know, to with the United Wrestling Network Tag Champs right now. You know, going on 300 days as United Wrestling Network Tag Champs. We just beat the longest reigning NXT Tag Champs of all time in the the Ascension slash the Awakening. Now, we just beat them. You know, what I'm saying now we get to take on another longest reigning Tag Champs. And, and Fatu and Sheik, and, and, you know, all respects to them. People know how brutal they are. People know how dirty they are. People know how they get down. But you know what? People are going to start learning how me and Slice get down. We win ugly. We win by <laughs> any means necessary. And if we have a chance to walk out of PCW with tag team titles, we're going to do it. We're going to add that to the collection. And then we go, after we beat those parks, we're going to go challenge those parks for the tag titles, and we're going to take the MLW tag team championships. And my vision is by the end of 2021, me and Slice Boogie will be walking around with tag team championships from three different companies. Damn. Belt Heck collectors. yeah. Belt Do collectors. Taking it all the belts. Taking all the belts. <laughs> and, and so talk to about your, your partnership with Slice. You know, what makes you guys, what makes, you know, a, a, a good team? You talk about having similar backgrounds. Uh, but also you have, you know, different experiences and styles, you know, T talk a bit about what makes you guys a, a, a good team and a team that other tag teams need to be worried about. Well, you know, we, we call our, we call ourselves the little BQE, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. I'm from Brooklyn. He's from Queens. We have that connection right there. The New York City link, you know, Slice, he grew up in the project. He's a project kid. I grew up in the streets of Brooklyn, you know, um. What we have that a lot of people don't have is that we ain't afraid to bend the rules. We ain't afraid to do what we, whatever it is that we got to do to be winners. We want to, we win ugly. But by, by win ugly, that means by any means necessary, we want to walk out with a W. I know that Slice is a real dude. I know he's loyal. I know he has 
the best interest of me and mom because the best interest of me also, in fact, has the best interest of himself. If we went in together, we walk in our with championships, more money, you know, m- more places to go. Um, and him and I, we have conversations all the time. We talk about things, you know, and, and sometimes we crack open some Hennessy and we talk some more. You know what I'm saying? But but Vice, Vice is, you know, a young up and comer who, who's been making waves also on NWA. He's been doing things on the independent mm-hmm. scene out here for a while. And, and I think that he's hungry as hell right now. And I think that that matched with, you know, my me, you know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm My style is a lot different than Slices. I, I can yeah. lucha. I can fly. I can strike. I can grapple. I can cheat. I can do all of it. You know, you can put me in there with anybody in the world and I can, I can, I can match their style in the ring. And I think that with Slices' size and strength and his and his lucha skills and, then, and, and me being able to do all the other things, we, you have two people that, that it's hard to prepare for. And, I, and I, I think that because of that, because our mentality, because of that, we don't give a fuck if people like us or not. <laughs> we just want to win. That makes That's it a threat. Best, though. That makes it a threat for people. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be mm-hmm. like. We don't care if they like us. We want to win. We want to win championships. We want to make a lot of money. We want to represent for our culture. That's it. That's well, it there. So cool. What match from your career would you recommend to our listeners? Like a tag match, like that most represents you, like something that, you know, maybe they're more recent fans. They might not have seen what, what's your, like the match that you would recommend? Man, listen, I have, there's three matches that I consider my three favorite matches of all time. Okay. My number one match is me versus Konosuke Takeshita from AEW Ooh. Elevation. If you haven't seen that match. Konosuke is the ace of DDT for a reason. And me and him had a <laughs> fucking banger. On AEW Elevation. Watch that match. Danny Limelight versus Konosuke Takeshita. Yeah. My favorite mm-hmm. match of all time is Danny Limelight versus John Moxley. Yes. Mm-hmm. Another so match. Good. That Check that one out. You know, I, I have so much respect for John. Um, he's one of the best in the world for a reason. And then my third match, one of my other favorite matches, would probably be me versus Clark Connors from the from the finals of the Lions Break Crown. Yeah. Yeah. That's another match that was. Really, really one of my favorites. And Clark Connors, man, he's he's a beast. He's he's really, really, really good. And I think yeah. people are just like see who he is. Um so it's another good match right there. If you want to watch like a, a tag match, you can check out our tag match versus the Awakening from last week's episode of Championship Wrestling from Atlanta. Um another match, any of my matches with Rocky Romero, mm-hmm. any of my team fil- any of my team filthy matches. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned, too, how you're really a hybrid of styles and your training has been what they probably would call on the job training. Yes. And what the styles that you mentioned is is Lucha, which is, you know, the focus of our show. So, you know, tell us how you learned uh, the Lucha style of wrestling and how that became something that you've incorporated in your arsenal, you know, in, in all the matches that you have. Well, that, that's going to be a shout out to Mariachi Loco and Lil Cholo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. I, I had took a break from wrestling in 2016 for two years because the Marine Corps sent me to go be a drone instructor. So I didn't have time to wrestle. But when I came back, the first place I went to was to where Mariachi Loco and Lil Cholo was training on Fridays. They were the ones that kind of taught me all the lucha stuff that you see me doing now. You know, they, 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 they. they they really gave me a platform and a place to, to, to work out the dust, you know, and, and they showed me a lot of things that I incorporated. Another person is Ray Phoenix. I watch a lot of Ray Phoenix matches. I think he's one of the best luchadors in the world. If not right now, the best luchador in the world. Um, and, and then, and then uh, like you said, on the job training, just wrestling luchadors, wrestling in Mexico, wrestling, you know, in LA, wrestling in, 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 in Florida, you know, it's just when you, when, you could train for any job, but there's no training like only job training, especially when it comes to fighting, when it comes to wrestling. Anything, that's just like the military. Yeah, I could I could sit here and I can shoot at a target that's not shooting back at me for all day. But it's a different scenario when things are blowing up and, and you're, there's rounds and shots coming down range. You understand? So yeah. def, definitely on the job training. I want to jump real quick into your acting career, because that is also, again, something else in your arsenal, your repertoire. You know, 
Can you kind of share what inspired you to go into acting? Is that something that you kind of admired as a kid, like you talked about with your wrestling background? Or is that more of something that maybe has has come out over the past few years? And, I mean, going into that field, I don't know, is it more challenging than wrestling? Or did you feel like wrestling's a, you know, a breeze, acting's hard? Or, you know what, this acting stuff's pretty good. I see why John Cena and Dave Bautista, you know, and Hulk Hogan went this route because it's easier on my body than, than wrestling. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's something I wanted to do as a kid um, ever since I watched the first Matrix movie. It was the, the first rated R movie I ever saw in theaters. My aunt took me to see it. And Keanu Reeves was obviously the main actor in the film. But a lot of people don't know, me and Keanu Reeves have the same birthday. So I found that out. And then I, I loved the movie The Matrix. And I was like, man, I, I wish I could be an actor. But again, it's one of those things. Where how do you do it? You know, how do you get into it? Um, fortunately, like I said, I ended up in California, you know, and, and I started auditioning. You know, our first audition was a stunt, a stunt audition for Marvel, for Marvel Live, the stunt show. And so I, I you know... I went out there, I did that, and I fell in love with the business. And and now, you know, being able to to act and do commercials and films and, and write my own stuff, you know, and also help my daughter with her career as well because she's killing it right now. Um, she She's doing a lot of commercials and films. She's actually about to be on set in a couple of weeks for a feature film. She booked a horror film, so she'll be doing that soon. Oh, wow. um, so cool. Nice. It's very cool. It, it, it's, you know... My main inspiration is my daughter, but if I look at somebody in the entertainment industry that I look up to, I'm going to say it's Dwayne Johnson. It's The Rock. You know, yeah. he started out as a wrestler and he transitioned into to acting. He's the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Never took an acting class, you know? But I think that for me, I always had the charisma. I always had the natural ability to talk and stuff like that. So transitioning from wrestling to, to acting was kind of easier. And then they both helped me. You know, I, I do better promos now because of the stuff that I learned from acting and I could do the stunt stuff. I could do the acting stuff because of the wrestling, you know. So they go hand in hand. And, and you know, when I wrote Joe Riv, you know, I was hugely inspired by John Wick, which is a Keanu, another Keanu Reeves movie that I love. <laughs> yeah. And and you know, it was something that I did. I wrote it and, and we shot it. And you know, obviously we had goals to get to the film festival, but not only did we make it to the film festival, we won six awards. You know, including best actor. You know, that that's that to me was all the validation that I needed to, to continue yeah. to be doing, you know. And I'm sure like there are people that, there's always gonna be people out there that hate. There's always gonna be people out there that, that that doubt or deny you or think you can't do something. When I first started wrestling, I'm sure people laughed at me and thought I couldn't do it. You know, especially being in the military, like, dude, what are you doing running around with underwear, bro? Go pick this rifle up and go shoot, you know, like <laughs> and, yeah. you know, telling out people I wanna be an actor. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool, you know, and then, I, and then I'm writing my own films, and I'm going to win awards, and yada, da 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 And then when you do it, people are like, oh, shit, like, this guy is serious about it, and I'm only yeah. getting better. I'm, I'm just now, I feel like I'm just now really hitting my stride in the ring, and I'm just now getting the hang of things when it comes to the acting and the writing and stuff like that. Surrounding myself with great people like Miko Sad, he was director uh, of Joe Riv. Surrounding myself with guys like Malachi, who does a lot of stunt stuff in the industry. He's been helping me a lot. And when you surround yourself with people that are doing things, it forces you to do things. You know, you're the average of the of the people you surround yourself <laughs> with. So who are you going to surround yourself with? Bozos or people that are grinding, people that are successful? So I flipped on Rocky and joined Team Filthy. Because why would I not want to be on Tom Lawler's side, you know? It's why I'm with LAX. Why would I not want to surround myself with hungry fighters? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's why I'm yeah. teaming with Apple. You know, you just, you just want to put yourself in a situation to win. A lot of people don't have that mentality. I've, I've, I've had that shit since I was two years old. I want to win. Yeah. Are there any acting projects on the horizon? You getting ready to do anything else that you can talk about yourself? Yes. I'm currently, you know, because of the success of Joe Riv. Uh, I'm in the process of turning it from a short film to a full length feature. I'm working on the script right now, adding things so to cool. it, making things out, extending it. Um, I'm, I also booked a horror film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in the same film as my daughter, so I'm uh, super. Oh, that's, that's awesome! Yeah. That's yeah. family bonding. That's, that's the family <laughs> business right there. Daddy daughter goes right there. Um, her one scene is actually with me in it too, uh, because I'm playing. Oh. It's a I'm playing one of the killers in the film. <laughs> it's nice. It. It's a pretty intense scene. It's called AFK. Um, it, it's gonna be so <laughs> thick. I can't wait for people to see that. So I have that coming. I'm working on the full length feature film for Joe Riff. I got a couple other short independent projects that I'm working on here and there. And then I'm 
helping my, my friends. You know, I'm, I'm writing things for people that are trying to do stuff. You know, I'm just working on my, my tools. Uh, we we got to ask about the transition in name too, from Danny Limelight to Danny Rivera. Oh uh, yeah. Um, well, so my my on screen I'm Daniel Lewis Rivera, Daniel L. Rivera for for film. Um, and in the, right. you know started wrestling as Danny Limelight. Well, people people that know me that watched me at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood from the beginning, I was wow. Danny Rivera there. Rivera was my last name. It's my real last name. It's the name that was on my uniform when I was in the Marine Corps. So when I went to MLW. I was thinking to myself, if I'm gonna be doing this LAX thing, this 5150 thing, I want I, I want a, a name that's gonna go with it. And then Homicide, Hernandez, Santana, Ortiz, yeah. Yeah. Rivera. <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. 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 totally it's, agree. Just fits. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I went with my last name. It's my legacy. I'm big on legacy. And, and now I forever immortalize my family's last name. When they make a when when MLW makes a Rivera action figure, the fucking box is gonna say Rivera on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so brilliant. And we're gonna buy five each just because yeah. Yeah. we wanna <laughs> say we we knew him well. Not, not even the, I'm, <laughs> gonna the, I'm gonna be the guy that gives out Rivera action figures for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh your daughter ain't gonna be playing with Barbie, she's gonna be playing with the Rivera action figures. Yeah. That, she's uh, her Barbies now. <laughs> Man, so you have had again. We talked about your big year, and we we've heard a bit about your goals in the tag world as far as what you want out of 2021. But what are some things you want out of your wrestling career? What are some places and people and events that you want to be mm-hmm. at that that you have those goals to get there? PWG. Um, I want to wrestle there. Um, I want to wrestle Davey Richards. I want to I want to wrestle um Casey Navarro one on one. I want to wrestle Jonathan Gresham. Um, I want to wrestle Alex Zane. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that are on my list that I want to one one with. Um, I want to wrestle Buddy Matthews. Um, and, and I want to wrestle Tony Nese as well. So those are the guys right now on the top of my head that that come to mind that I want to go one on one with. But, you know, from as far as my goals, it's always, it's always my goal's always been the same thing. I, I want to represent my culture. I want to set the bar for my daughter, show her what the example is so she can surpass it. You know, I, I, I want to surround myself with the right type of people. I want to build people up. I want to help people grow. And at the same time, I'm going to grow. I'm going to get better. I never accept anything less than perfection. I try my hardest to strive for the best. You Nobody's ever perfect, but if you're aiming to be perfect, you're going to get pretty damn close. You understand? So as far as my goals, I want to be legendary. I want, I want to be a household name. I want everybody to see me and know who I am, whether it's because of the stuff that I do in the ring or the stuff that I do on the big screen. And I know that the way my mentality is and, and the ambition and passion that I have. And sometimes my passion puts my foot in my mouth. But you know what? At the end of the day, I take taste it, taste a little salty or not, rub it out, learn from my mistakes, keep pushing. Um, I'm a go-getter, and, and, and I'm not going to stop till I get who I want to be. I just want to be legendary. Well, you're on your way. Again, you had an amazing year. You've gone to some of the biggest promotions in all of pro wrestling. You did it during a damn pandemic. You know, right. something that that prevented so many people from doing, you know, yeah. so many things. You took it to a whole other level. Um, so we here on the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast are just excited uh, to see where you go next. We'll be covering you all the time. So make sure, listeners, yeah. you listen to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast uh, because we'll mention you wherever you go. And, you know, at the, at the same time, your goals and, and your dreams are way bigger than the world of wrestling, too. So <laughs> that uh, is something that I think – we as wrestling fans get to enjoy, but I think just everyone will get to see the talent that you bring out in Hollywood, in TV, in film, and all of that. And I think it's also something special when, as wrestling fans, we could say we knew him when we saw him, dur- you know, during those those other days. Uh, and it's it's always something special. So a big congratulations, so yeah, big thank congratulations. You. Thank you so much for having me on the show, and thank you to all your listeners for listening. Um, if anybody wants to follow me, they can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Danny Limelight. Check out ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight for my merchandise. Um, and, and just reach out to me. I'm not a hard person to get a hold of. I'm very active on social media. 
you know, Dusty, Miranda, uh, um, thank you guys so, so, so much for bringing me on the show. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and King Brendar, thank you so much too for being here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I snuck in a little late, so I was just it's letting them have fun. So but, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much. It was a lot of fun, and, and I hope to be talking to you guys again soon. Absolutely. Oh, I will be seeing you October 22nd. So Let's uh, go. Yes, Brandon, Brandon <laughs> is going to be repping the podcast at PCW Ultra All Systems Go. Make sure that you get your tickets for that event if you're in the California area. Or, hey, if you want to make out a trip to California, PCW Ultra is going to be a show you can't miss. Of course, MLW as well uh, at Fightland this weekend. The United Wrestling Network, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Championship Wrestling from Atlanta. You can also see Danny Limelight at, at, and of course, New Japan Strong. I mean, again, you could see this man everywhere. So put, <laughs> you know, get your tickets, put your alerts on, follow him on social media. You absolutely want to follow this man's career because it only keeps getting better. Uh, and we're, again, we're excited to see you take off from here. So thank you. Big thank you to Danny Limelight for joining us on the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast special. Uh, make sure you follow him. Make sure you follow us at luchacentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. And check us out each and every week on the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast, which you can find on luchacentral.com, all of your favorite podcast streaming platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Speaker, and our partners at thechairshot.com. So for Brendan Barr and Dusty Murphy, I'm Miranda Morales. Thank you so much, and we'll be back with you on our show. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. 